And we're back with a little tutorial nugget on ranching. We're only going to cover hatches. If I tried to do all the critters, it'd take too long. So let's just do a, a quick, very condensed tutorial on how to go from basic hatches to advanced hatches. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to wrangle one up. Now wrangling them is a little bit tricky because they're nocturnal critters, which means they hide. As in during the during the day, they actually burrow. Where was it? There was one around here. Yep, there. So you can see there's actually one burrow there in the dirt. So when you're going to wrangle them up when you first want them, good idea is to drag select vast quantities of the map. Oh, and there's a pip over there. And you'll see these little, uh, the little symbol come up when you've actually acquired one that you want. Once they've been... Uh, marked for wrangle, your duplicate will come along and wrangle them. However, your duplicate can only wrangle the critter if they've got a skill in wrangling. See Lino here, they have critter ranching level 1. That critter ranching skill gives them plus 2 animal husbandry and the ability to crit critter wrangle and use a grooming station. The second skill doesn't do anything except give you a bonus to husbandry, but we'll, we'll cover more on that later. So now that you've got a wrangle critter, what do you want to do with them? Well, you want to actually have them drop off somewhere. So I've set this to drop off hatches and hatchlings. We'll put, just put this on the highest priority for now so the dupes actually drop it off. Then the duplicates will pick them up and drop them off at that location. They're normally not this close though. And there we go, dropped off. That's how you'll get your hatches to where you want them. Next up, you're going to need a grooming station. It's under the station section, not under food, unlike everything else in the ranching section. And now your dupes can come along here and actually groom the critter when the time comes. Critters start off as wild, they have 100% wildness. Every time you groom them, they get minus 55% of their wildness. This is what the grooming animation looks like. Once it's completed, once Tiger there has finished her job, we'll have a quick look. Hatch is now groomed. And you'll notice there at the bottom it has time remaining, 2.1 cycles. Uh, as a, a duplicate with zero skill in animal husbandry, which is technically impossible, um, will groom a, a hatch for one cycle. As in, they'll groom it, and then the hatch will not need to be regroomed for a whole cycle. However, the minimum skill a duplicate can have and still groom a critter will be plus two because they automatically gain a plus two just from having critter ranching level one, which they require for the grooming. So the minimum they'll groom them for is about 1.2 cycles. This is very important, but it also means that this uh, hatch, even, uh, even though they've only been groomed once, you'll see there they're groomed minus 55% wildness a cycle. It means they'll be completely groomed in two cycles. Here we are t two cycles later and its wildness is down to 0.2%. It's about to become tame. And when it does, there'll be a few changes here in this particular area. Now, as you can see, several changes. One is reproduction. You can now see what their reproduction rate is. Uh, you can also see their happiness rate. Uh, additionally, you can also see their calorie counter and their body temperature. Calorie counter, very important. This means this critter can now starve to death. Before this, before it became tame, it could not starve. Now it can, so you will have to feed the critter. Um, reproduction rate has gone up. If you'll notice, its base reproduction rate is 2%. That's what its reproduction rate is by default. So it will drop about one egg in its life cycle because it lives for 100 cycles. However, because we're grooming the critter and it's fed and happy, it, its reproduction goes up by 15%, meaning it's going to drop an egg once every six cycles. There's some rounding errors going on here. They've just rounded it up to about 17%. It's actually a little bit more or less, I can't remember. But yes, once, ex once every six cycles, this critter will drop an egg. Now, we've got to feed this critter. So the first thing I'm going to do is cover its diet. Its diet is listed down here at the bottom. There is an enormous amount. Don't panic. Ignore everything below the sixth line down. That's all food. Food that your duplicates can also eat. Trying to convert food into hatch hatches is just, it's, it's not efficient. I wouldn't bother. What you really care about is all the top six ones because they all require uh, 140 kilos of that material to keep them satisfied for a full cycle. The important ones are sand and sandstone. Those are very important on some maps because it will be very plentiful and you can turn that sandstone and sand into coal if you want. Also, you've got clay, which you don't care about, crushed rock, I don't even know how you make that currently, dirt, which you also don't care about, and sedimentary rock, which is very, very, very important. So sand, sandstone, and sedimentary rock are the main ones you really care about. Now, we're selecting this food choice here as sedimentary rock. You can see there's hatchlings down here, but there's also hatch listed up here. It doesn't really matter which one you pick, just pick the, the food source you're selecting. And there you go, and you can copy it to the second feeder. Now, the reason I have two feeders and one storage bin is because hatches eat a lot. 140 kilos is a lot, and these storage bins or their food feeders only store 2,000 kilos, which means they'll run out rather quickly, and if your duplicates don't get around to restocking them, that could be problematic. So I keep a storage bin on one higher priority than the food than the, than the feeders. Storage bin set to 6, critter feeder set to 5. That means duplicates are more likely to carry a large chunk of food over here to the storage bins as opposed to 140 kilos to this feeder every time it gets eaten from. When you have 7 or 8 hatches in here, that's 7 or 8 operations your duplicates will have to do dropping off 140 kilos. Having it really close by in a storage bin cuts down on duplicate labour, so it's a good idea to keep one around. The main reason we went with the 140 kilo foods is the hatches, when they eat it, they have a 
they have an excretion thing down here that lists they will excrete 50 percent of the consumed mass that's very important consumed mass means the more mass they consume the more coal they'll produce if you notice all the little foods we were talking about that i said to ignore they're all like uh, like a percentage of a kilo or you know 0.9 of a kilo 0.2 of a kilo if they if you fed them on nutrient bars at 0.9 kilos per cycle they'd give you 0.45 kilos of coal as opposed to consuming 140 kilos of sandstone they'd give you 75 kilos of coal but no 70 kilos of coal apologies so you've got your critters in here you've actually tamed them down and they've started dropping eggs for you and you've got enough eggs to fill your incubators well you're going to have wanted to go a couple of different ways with the incubators these are currently unpowered incubators which means they don't speed up the rate at which the eggs are incubated they'll just have to natch, hatch, uh, hatch naturally eggs hatch in t in 20 cycles so you get a, an unpowered incubator you stick an egg in it and it will hatch 20 cycles later However, how do you get all the excess eggs and make them go into your egg cracking so you can get omelettes? Well, just cover omelettes first. Well, you basically go in here and you'll set this to one priority lower than your incubators. So if this is set to six and we set that to crack all the hatchling eggs forever, you'll also want to do sage hatchlings and stone hatchling eggs because they can potentially drop those. You will go over reproduction rates in a minute. Then what will happen is any eggs will first get dropped off into the incubators. If the incubators are all full, they will get dropped off into the egg cracker and cracked and turned into eggs, which you can then cook up into omelettes. Therefore, you've got food out of them. Excellent. Now, uh, if you're using these, if you're using unpowered incubators, you need to consider it takes 20 cycles for this to hatch an egg. So hatches live for 20 cycles, which means one unpowered incubator can support about 10, or sorry, can support five hatches. As in, if you had, say, only five hatches, one incubator would keep that, that, that population stable. If you had more than that, well, you're going to actually, for every one of these, you can have an additional five hatches in your uh, ranches. You don't want to have more than eight hatches in every ranch. In fact, you'd be better off keeping it at about seven until you're off eggs, or, well, until you get automation in place, you should keep it about seven. The reason being, a moment an egg is dropped in a place that's already incubated, it reduces the happiness level. If you'll notice the reproduction rate there on that critter, it's at se plus 17% per cycle. This is because it's groomed and happy, and its extra happiness has increased its reproduction rate by 900%. Now, I've just dropped in an extra hatch there, and because I've dropped in an extra hatch, these hatches are now overcrowded. And because they're overcrowded, they get the glum debuff, and it reduces their metabolism, and it also reproduces their reproduction. The reproduction is now back to 2%, meaning they're, they're effectively wild hatches. You're not going to get any more food out of them, you're not going to get any more eggs out of them, they're just pointless. They're also going to produce a fifth of as much coal as before. This also has to do with the size of the room. The room is 96 tiles in size, you can fit 8 hatches in there. That's because each hatch requires 12 tiles of space to be comfortable. That's why you can fit eight in here. However, eggs also count as critters. So if the reason that's why I suggest seven, if an egg drops in here before you get in this automation or, or this automation setup, the egg could be left in there for a while before your duplicates extract it. And while the egg is in there, these hatches will suffer, suffer a debuff to the reproduction rates. It's not the end of the world, but you're better off keeping, say, four hatches at seven, then two at eight and two at six, it would, just for reproduction rate purposes. If you want to go hog wild and really spend power, these are about 350 watts to run an incubator. That means the eggs will hatch in four cycles as opposed to 20. So since you can get four egg, four ah, since you can get an egg in four source four cycles and the hatches live for 100 cycles, that means you can support about 25 25 hatches on just one incubator. However, they generate a lot of heat, they take a lot of power. I mean, 350 watts is quite a bit considering most of the the early game tech you'll have will be very power minimalist. So it's usually just better to grind up more metal and make a bunch of unpowered incubators to do your egg needs. Before I get into numbers on food, how many ranches you need, barbecue versus omelettes, on all of that, I just want to cover one very, very important mechanic, and that is stone hatch eggs. Stone hatches are a different breed of hatches, and the way you get your hands on them is you feed regular hatches sedimentary rock. When you feed them sedimentary rock, their chances of laying a stone hatch egg goes up every time they feed. Oop, there, they just ate a bunch of sedimentary rock, and their chances of stone hatch eggs went from 1% to 6 That means when they lay an egg, when their reproduction caps it at 100% here, which will take about another well, less than six cycles anyway. Uh, once that happens, it, they have the potential to lay a stone hatch egg. If you keep feeding them sedimentary rock, those chances just keep going up and up. I think it maxes out about 98%, but it, it slows down. The higher it gets, the slower it goes up, but it's usually pretty quick to turn all of your hatches into stone hatches if you want. Uh, excuse my filthy sandbox mode, but I wanted to spawn in a stone hatch so you could see why they work. Sediment, their diet changes. A stone hatch can eat sedimentary rock, igneous rock, obsidian, granite, and a bunch of metals. Don't feed them metals. The reason this is so powerful is it takes stuff that used to be useless to you and makes it incredibly useful. Uh, igneous rock, 11,000 tons. Granite, 8, 850 tons. And obsidian, 83 tons. 
every map you find, it will either have a plentiful supply of sandstone, sand, sedimentary rock, igneous rock, obsidian, or granite. Th those will be one of the most common materials. At least one of them will be one of the most common materials, if not a b whole bunch of them, which means you can run them for ages. Uh, another note on sedimentary rock, there is one map, the Badlands, which completely stifled me for a minute because there was no, uh, there was no chance of sedimentary rock. However, if you get fossil, fossils uh, common in all the oil biomes, you're going to be grinding up fossil to make lime, and when you grind up fossil, 95% of the output is sedimentary rock. So even if the map doesn't have sedimentary rock, so long as it has fossil, you can still also make sedimentary rock. That will allow you to make stone hatches. So that means you have absolutely thousands of tons of, of material you can feed them, and most of that material is not stuff you're going to need a lot of. Or you have so much of, a, 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 few, hundred, a few thousand tons of it's not going to make a difference. Now we get around to, why is this room this shape? Well, it basically corrals these hatches into this small area, and it still gives them the whole space of the room. Additionally, you're not going to have access to auto sweepers at the start, but when you do, you can quickly fit in an auto sweeper and a conveyor loader, and the auto sweeper can reach the entire area, therefore scooping up all the eggs, meaning you don't have to. As well as that, the auto sweeper can move uh, material from the storage bin into the auto the feeders, meaning the only thing your duplicate should have to do is restock the storage bins, which is a much simpler task, and they can do it in bigger bulk than just 140 kilos every time the hatch is taken nibble. The numbers. How good are they at producing food? Well, two regular hatches or stone hatches, the, the reproduction rates of all the hatch variants are exactly the same, regardless of which types you get. They produce one egg every six cycles, the egg's worth 2.8 thousand calories, and you will get, you will be able to support with 2.2 hatches, you can support one duplicate, roughly 2.2. You want to err on the side of caution, of course. So 2.2 hatches, you can support one duplicate. However, once it gets a little bit later, you can start automating this process. And instead of using uh, the eggs for mm, omelets, what you can do is sit in some auto sweepers and dump all of those eggs into a little uh, evolution chamber. The hatches the eggs get dropped off in here and eventually they will hatch and when they do they will encounter a, a hostile environment that will force them to evolve in their final form of meat at which point this auto sweeper is going to sweep them out dump them into this conveyor loader and send them over there to the grill to be barbecued now the joy of this little system i stole it off someone on reddit i think or maybe it was the forums or a post i can't remember apologies i should be able to give out the credit but i can't uh duplicates can reach across this doorway so if just say oh, we'll, take, we'll extract this hatch and that needs an egg, well, a duplicate can come along, pick up the egg out of there, and dump it right into the uh, incubator. Well, no, they've gone up to do... Why are you going over there? Oh, they're delivering meat. But yeah, look, duplicate's able to pick up the eggs out of there and drop them straight off into the, the incubator. This is, just makes it so simple. And there is a hatch that has been born, and then that hatch is suffering the draining debuff because it's evolving. This simplifies getting turning all of your eggs into meat. Once you've turned them into meat, meat can be turned into barbecue, and that's 4,000 calories. The egg drop rate remain, has remained the same, so instead of getting 2,800 cal 2 cal uh, 2, calories out of an egg, you're now getting 4,000 calories per egg, which means 1.5 hatches can support one duplicant. Now, of course, go a little bit over, as well as that this is assuming you're playing on normal difficulty and not ravenous hunger and you don't have any dupes at bottomless stomach. So 1.5 hatches can support one duplicant. Now the important question, how many hatches can a duplicant ranch? Now this will vary, but what I'm going to go with here is if you're getting a ranching hatch, make sure that the rancher has plus seven hatching by uh, plus seven ranching by default. You can usually get these out of the the gate. They're not hugely common, but you will get them. The reason being, you can't currently upgrade animal husbandry. So we'll take Tigra here. Her husbandry skill is at 11, even though she's been ranching. There's a bug in the game where grooming critters does not increase animal husbandry skill. They know it. They're going to fix it at some point in the future, but it's not a big deal for them, and it's been there for a few months, so they don't care. Every time they do level up, though, they can gain plus one to the, uh, they gain plus one to their animal husbandry skill. They gain uh, the room duration effect lasts ten percent longer, or ten percent of a cycle. So we're going to target here duplicates that have eleven husbandry. Eleven husbandry is gained by starting with plus seven and then immediately getting the two skills in critter ranching one and two that will bring them up to plus eleven. One side note, duplicates can actually increase their animal husbandry skill if they do egg hugging. As in, you have a powered incubator, the dupes will run along and hug the egg once a cycle to give it the, the buff to make it hatch faster. However, it's such a short animation and it happens so infrequently, it takes thousands of cycles to level up any significant amount. So, the million dollar question. How many hatches can a duplicate ranch if a hatch could ranch wood? Oh, never mind. Uh, what I've done here is I've set up two duplicates. Uh, these duplicates are... They've got 11 animal husbandry and 5 athletics, and that's it. Well, they've got a bit of creativity. I was doing some creative testing before I repurposed this map. 
they're in a, they've got their own little chambers and all they're doing all day is ranching critters. They don't feed them, the food is just left on the ground, it's all good. They don't have to do anything but ranch critters. How many can they ranch? Uh, I had set both of these up so I could do one testing with lights. Lights have no effect on the grooming animation, don't bother installing them, I tested that already. Uh, each one of these has access to eight, uh, eight hatches in each ranch and they have four ranches. After a little bit of speeding forward you will notice both the duplicates are idle. Every single hatch is groomed. 32 hatches. This rancher, just with, uh, assuming they came out of the gate with seven husbandry, you gave them the critter ranching skills, they can groom 32 hatches and still have a little bit of time left over. Now, to bear in mind, they're quite close by and this is minimized travel distance and a few other things, but they do have a significant, well, a reasonable chunk of downtime before they have to go back and groom all the critters. With this many critters, they could support about 21.3 duplicates. I wouldn't try and support 21.3, I'd probably support about 20 or 19 just to be safe, but that's with just one duplicate being ra doing ranching. Also bear in mind they're not stocking up the feeders or doing anything like that, so you will need other duplicates to provide other labour. But two duplicates would allow you to support about 40, with ranching hatches alone, they would allow you to support about 40 dupes. And you're feeding them on the most common materials in the game, and they're chucking you out lots of coal. They produce about, what, uh, 8.6 hatches, I think I worked it out as, it will pr provide enough coal to keep one coal generator running constantly. Definitely invest in hatches in my opinion. They're an excellent source. Once you go hatches, you'll probably never stop going them. They simplify your power needs, they simplify your food, need, food needs, they're a water-free food source, and you feed them the most common materials in the game. A few final notes on these. Uh, I saw uh, a different hatch design by Gearhead Gaming. He basically built them up, uh, built the hatcheries up straight. So the ranches were placed straight up and there was a ground floor and the rest of the floor is still counted because there was uh, open gaps in a ladder up the side. You can change the shape of your ranches if you want just to make them more space efficient. As well as that, you can put equipment inside ranches. It doesn't affect them from being a rancher or not. So you'll notice in here, there's a bunch of transformers in this one and there's a bunch of gas pumps in here. It does not affect the ranches. So you can use the, the dead space for storage or batteries or transformers or even machinery. It doesn't matter, the ranches don't care. Uh, it's natural progression to kind of move over to move into slicksters. Slicksters are almost identical. You fit the same amount, same hatch designs, everything. The only thing is they spit out oil, so you just put in some mesh tiles to collect it, and they consume carbon dioxide, which is a huge benefit. Assuming you can run the petroleum generators to support it, that means you can pump in their food without no duplicate labor required. That said, if you want to live on hatches, you can live on them for thousands of cycles. I'm in the midst of switching over to stone hatches, as you can see up here. Uh, that means I can now have 2,800 tons of food. Uh, that means that about 140 kilos per meal, say 40 hatches, that's about 500 cycles worth of food, just in igneous rock. And I haven't mined out all the map yet. There's quite a lot of sandstone, oil biomes, everything left around the place to feed them. You can survive on these for quite some time. The fact that they're completely water-free is incredibly valuable. Uh, you'll run out of dirt for your meal wood long before you run out of food to feed your hatches. I strongly recommend you try hatches in one of your playthroughs and you will never look back. I know I didn't. Anyway, I hope this was at least mildly informative to, for you and not too long-winded this time, and uh, good luck.